employees, now the country's largest union for public employees, representing 1.6 million working and retired members. Joining me now is the current president of that union and the first black man to hold the title, Lee Saunders. He also addressed those gathered for the march yesterday. Lee, I think people forget that this was a march for jobs and freedom. Tell me why there's been such a concerted attack on labor in recent years. Well, I think that they want to move labor out of the way completely. They've attacked the private sector unions. Private sector membership is now down to 6%. Public sector membership in, in, in unions is about 35%. Uh, so they want to come after us. We still have resources. We still have power. So they believe that if they take us out, as they did the private sector unions, then they'll have a free reign to control this country. And we've got to stop them. We can't let them do this. We've got to rebuild our coalition, uh, continue to organize, not only in the public sector, but rebuild our private sector unions. We've got to work with our community organizations, our allies, our coalition partners. That's why yesterday, that's why yesterday was so important, because all of us, the civil rights community, the religious community, labor, uh, students, retirees, all of us came together and we made a statement. And that statement was, we want to be treated fairly. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to achieve the American dream. And right now, that's very difficult to do. There's been a dramatic decline in the percentage of workers who are covered by unions, who are part of unions, whether, whether it's public or private unions. And that has this a, a kind of rippling effect for all workers, whether they're in unions or not. Tell me, when you think about organizing people into unions, explaining the importance of them, are the strategies different? now are the arguments different now than they were 50 years ago oh I think I think we have to adjust I think we have to make changes I think that we've got to go about organizing in a completely different kind of way we've got to look at new sectors of the uh, of the economy to organize uh, my union asked me uh, we're organizing child care workers home care workers mm -hmm. uh, public service workers all over the country uh, we've taken some hits the past couple of years simply because of what's going on, going on in states like Wisconsin where mm -hmm. Scott Walker stole our voices took collective bargaining away from us but I've got to tell you, Melissa, that our members are charged up, mm -hmm. and they're angry, and they are frustrated, just as working Americans, whether they belong to a union or they don't, mm -hmm. they are frustrated with what's going on here. They're frustrated with the fact that the top 1% in this country still control the 40% of this wealth. Mm -hmm. They're frustrated that CEOs are making, on average, 354 times the amount of what working families are making. Mm -hmm. That's the largest wage gap in this country's history. We've got to fight back. I was just in Milwaukee uh, about a week ago, and I kept thinking, this is the place where interracial organizing can happen is on that intersection between labor and civil rights, right? That you need, you need white working class folks and you need uh, agricultural laborers who may be Latino you know, and you need black folks who are working in a whole variety of jobs. How do you do the work of, if, for example, during, during the work you're doing right now with SEIU and the fast food workers, how do we make sure that labor organizing is also interracial organizing? Well, we're linking. We're linking the movements. I mean, and that's what we must do. Uh, we're linking the movement with the fast food workers. Mm -hmm. We're linking the movement with taxi cab drivers who want to organize in city after mm. city after city. We're linking the movement with the independent providers, the child care workers, the home care workers. Mm -hmm. And it was so important for us to link our movement with Occupy Wall Street because they were able to, to signal a tone that we were not able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they were not within the union movement, mm -hmm. but they had a very strong message. And that strong message was that there is unfairness yeah. that exists in this country. And the economic equality that exists in the inequality that exists in this country right now must be addressed. And so all of us have got to work together. That's why Dr. King understood this very, very clearly. And that's why he traveled to Memphis in mm -hmm. 1968. He understood the value and he understood the importance of linking civil rights mm -hmm. with human rights, mm -hmm. with labor rights, with worker rights. He understood those values. He understood that we had to have a larger community to address those concerns. I thank you so much for, for the continuing work. We're going to have our eyes here on this show on the fast food worker strikes, on the Walmart work, and on the continuing organizing, both with AFSCME and with, and with SEIU. So thank you so much for your work. Thank Lee you. Saunders.